Jizz Llama update. Okay, so I had a talk with Jeff Schoon over at JL Audio here in Tempe. There are two factories. There is one here in Tempe, which is probably just not very much. I was doing a little research on Jeff. Jeff, has a, he's a real estate agent as well. And um, there's some other public information you can look up about JL that I thought was surprising. That it was a foreign corporation, foreign owned. Um, Jeff is the... Is it the statutory agent here in the valley, which is sort of like, you know, the person you go to if you have a problem with JL or whatever. But anyways, Jeff's been there a super long time. I asked him if he was the J in the JL and he said no. But the other one is Luciano. Uh, I think that's how he says his name. And he's in Florida. So he's also in the, the documents online for JL. So this is the solution that we have for now until what I really want to do is... Um, so, so to sort of go through the, the conversation I had with Jeff, most of it was about COVID, but um, a very sweet guy, very nice guy. And I thank you very much, Jeff, for reaching out to me and, and calling me instead of just, you know, threatening me like a lot of people do, uh, Scott Dildo. And uh, so anyways, um, so we have a ton of these decals and uh, we were looking at the uh, trademark uh, and the trademark has the JL audio underneath. Uh, do I, uh, again, let me grab my, let me show you on this W6. So, and technically that's not even the registered trademark because the registered trademark should have an R down to the bottom right of it. And you'll see that in like a genuine decal, it'll have the R. Anything that's sort of knockoff that you see, maybe like a decal on eBay or something like that, that won't have it because then that is definitely a, a, a trademark violation. So technically this is not the registered trademark, even though it came from jail. It's like, okay, but uh, you know, I'm sure from now on, they'll be sure to make sure they involve that into the, I'd love to see the version three backplate to see if they updated it. So, but technically that's not the logo. And I actually learned this a long time ago from Kinko's because I was trying to, uh, I had Hafler uh, car audio amp, uh, which of course is Rockford Corporation. And uh, I like the logo and he's like, I can't copy that. And I was like, why not? And he's like the R right there. And so I just whited out the R and he goes, okay. And it was, and he was fine with it. So, and of course that you get into use and personal uses and things like that. So, but I, I think it's an interesting concept about trademark, especially since uh, um, I got to submit uh, my paperwork on Monday on complaining that the nerdy girls are stealing my trademark, which it's not really trademark, it's IP, which is different, intellectual property. But anyway, because I've been trading on the name. So, but, uh, so this is the solution that we came up with is we just write Jizz Llama on there. And we certainly don't want to confuse people that this is a JL audio product, which is, it's not obviously. In fact, it's not even a Jizz Llama product, even though we're going to call it Jizz Llama because we're okay with that. It's actually, and then that's why I call it the javelin catcher. You ever seen a javelin catch a, or I'm sorry, you ever see a llama catch a javelin? It's not pretty. <laughs> uh, this one's dual two, it's 300 RMS. Um, I would compare it to, I think, whatever the W1 or W3, whatever JL is running right now. Theirs is like 250, 250 300 watts. This, one, this one's got a bigger voice coil um, and it's all copper. Like I said, I, saw, I showed you the TSPs on it. It plays down about 35 hertz, 34 hertz. It's a really great woofer. Um, and they're selling them very close to landed cost. So we figured out the landed cost on these is about 20, uh, depending on when when you go through tariffs or when you go through customs, it's about $25 each. So that's, but you, of course you have to order a thousand of these. So, and then, you know, then they go, oh, if you order a thousand, we make your name on those and you go, okay. But um, it's, a, it's a really good woofer and it, I think it's as good or better than uh, definitely a JL Audio uh, W3 or whatever W1. I don't know. I don't. I get confused with other Ws. But um, it is definitely not a, a JL Audio product. Let me say that. It is. A, we're selling it under the brand Jizlama, even though it's an Audio Legion. Jizlama Lab uh, was a Jizlama javelin catcher. But um, we're gonna boot up some of those. Um, what was it? What was the other thing? Oh. Yeah, so Larry got really spazzy with me. Um, oh, I'm not supposed to say Larry's name. Uh, <laughs> I won't say Larry's name anymore. Uh, the owner or controller of 
recoil over there in Phoenix asked me to be nicer to JL or at least not pick on them. And I'm like, well, that's really hard because I did a video earlier about a, um, a refoam that I'm doing for a, a W6 uh, version two. And I was like super sad. And I was like, oh, I can't, I can't do any more videos like that. That's that's insane. That is not me. That is not what I do. And then, and what's funny is I, I talked to Jeff about that. I was like, you didn't ask Larry to, you know, put pressure on me. And he goes, oh, no, 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 I would never do that. He goes, I'm a, I'm a true blooded American. He says, I would never try to suppress your freedom of speech. He says, we can't control that. And I was like, wow, that's really cool. That was really refreshing because it was definitely a different tune than what, you know, recoil was telling me. So, uh, but recoil mostly deals in China and deals with Chinese people. And that's a different attitude. So, but uh, I'm doing some reviews. We got the new amps in. I, I decided to get a case of each one. To I'm going to pull these apart and do a video on each one. This is the uh, RED 600.1. We got the 1200.1, and then we got the matching uh, four channel. So uh, let's see. Is the it is one ohm stable? Good, good, Larry. Good job. So and then as far as um, I talked to Recoil about um, doing an OEM uh, run. They're doing some subs right now uh, over in China, and they, typically they do about 1,000 at a time. And so I said, hey, can we do 30% OEM? So because I want I want Recoil to have a, an OEM line so that you guys can badge them. So I really want you guys to, when you get it, when you when those come available on the store, buy them and then put whatever you know logo you want on them, your own logo, whatever, um, and show that you know I was right, that people really want this, that people at home can make a living selling really good woofers uh, under whatever, you know, their home brand or whatever. And uh, otherwise you can't afford to buy a thousand of these, you know, you're like, well, yeah, they're only whatever, what did I say? $25. Yeah, they're only $25. Yeah, but you got to buy a thousand. Good luck, good luck coming up with that money and you got to pay up front. So sometimes if, even if you have a business, it's like, it's a third up front to start production. And then a third when, uh, it, was it, this is, the, this is when I went to business school uh, long, long, long time ago when I was taking college courses. Uh, it's a third up front and then a third when after production is completed and then a third when it's on the water is what is what usually what you pay. So, but, um, uh, you know, China may have been different or whatever. I like to use Alibaba just because you can use your credit card and I get like double points if I use my credit card, which I really like. But um, what else? Oh, the contest. So let's have a contest on the new logo. So something that does not violate any sort of trademark, even though technically this is not their logo. So, but I want to be nice. I want to play nice. Uh, but uh, who is it? Um, Paris Featherstone of Berserk Audio up in Scottsdale. He submitted the first one, and that's what I came up with on the thumbnail, uh, which was like it makes it look like it's, he's got a jacket on, which I thought was really cool. Um, and personally, I think Jizlama is a billion-dollar uh, brand waiting to happen, and, and I'm glad that I kind of stumbled up on it, and I think it's a fun way to sort of poke fun at posh people um, uh, and, and still have something that's good quality and, you know, performs well. So one of the things that... Uh, that um, uh, oh, I just forgot his name. Jeff, Jeff Schoon. One of the things that Jeff Schoon talked about was he says he felt that, you know, JL Audio makes some of the best sounding woofers in the world. And um, I said, yeah, I commented on the, the price increases that they put on the website. Of course, those are MSRPs. Those aren't final prices unless you're buying directly from JL, uh, which you, typically they'll send you to a JL dealer that's near you or even buy from Crutchfield so that it's a little bit cheaper because they have a little wiggle room when you do that. So, but if you look on the website, um, uh, that's the MSRP and it went up and Jeff tried to, uh, you know, say, well, the, you know, we're the, one of the only makers that JL audio is one of the only makers in America still making woofers. And I was like, well, it's only the W six and W sevens. It's not anything else. So, and then I did a little research and then everything else is China made. So, but you know, and I, I didn't like that about Jeff, but what's good about Jeff is that, um, uh, he, it was refreshing to hear some, some, I, I would say mostly honesty. He, I, what I was, what I'm really complaining about is, is being candid. So, but you got to remember, he's got a lot of responsibility. 
uh, even though he, you know, tried to play it off humble that, you know, he's just a, just a long time nobody that's been there forever. And I was like, mm, I don't know about that. And then we went over, uh, uh, Recoil is right next door, basically, the next neighborhood over from the JL Audio building. And we cruised by the building. And of course, it's unmarked and just looks like a regular, you know, business park type of uh, warehouse. And But it's got a big glass facade. Um, and uh, so, but uh, one thing that I did notice about JL, I want to make this comment real quick, is that he kept calling it the boots. And I was like, what the fuck is he talking about? The boots logo. And so if you look at it, it looks like ski boots, which is, a th which is what I think he was referring to. So, I mean, you could refer to it as just regular boots, but I, I really would refer to it as ski boots. And you got to understand at the time when they came up with this brand and, and this, this uh, company, um, it could be a reference to the kind of lifestyle that they like, which is, you know, ski chalets and all that kind of shit. Uh, or it could be a simple nod to Alpine, who was around before them. So, you know, and a lot of companies will do that where they just kind of put a little wink and nod in their, you know, and they basically the same thing with Jizlama. It's like, uh, oh, and I did, I, Jeff actually said the words Jizlama, which is hilarious. <laughs> so, but uh, Jizlama is just a valid, is, is, is just as valid as any other brand. Uh, but we want to have more fun with it. Um, one of the things that Jeff did kind of, questioning me about it because I told him I said well it's a parody brand and he goes you don't really want to run a parody brand do you and I was like yeah I go I love Weird Al and I went off and was like like a surgeon and was singing him and, and uh he goes who's who's that and I go Weird Al Yankovic you, you ever hear of him I was like he's what he's like one of the most famous guys and he does great parodies of songs and he's very creative and he does lots of sometimes he does originals but like when you watch the video like Dare to be Stupid uh, that's, that's actually, of course, you know, art and, the uh, the visuals, uh, based on Devo and some other bands, uh, of that period. So, but Dare to be Stupid is actually an original. So I hope to one day have original stuff for other brands that I want to develop. But for right now, I just want to have fun. And I think this is a fun way to, uh, sort of poke fun at the, the poshness of people that think that their 2002 BMW is made of gold. And uh, they don't want to pay the $400 to get a new AC switch. Uh, so they end up hacking it into their own. And um, I actually got a complaint from a guy. He, he was complaining that uh, this Ledesma's uh, over on Broadway, um, uh, they do installs. And typically they do better work. I have lately I've seen a couple of complaints and I said, well, just follow up with them and just learn to be nice. You know, you don't have to be mean to them. But uh, Ledesma's won't even work on Mercedes-Benz or BMW just because they're so difficult to take apart. It's not that they're better quality made. I mean, there's some things that are that are nice, like the trunk is quiet and they try to keep noise from the trunk separate from the cabin, things like that. But that, you know, you can get that in a lot of cars, not just a, a BMW or a Mercedes. So but they, they won't even work on them because they're what I've what I've figured out was that a lot of these guys have, a, you know, technically that is a luxury car or a high, I should say high performance car, but they, you know, they think it's really something, but it's not. So it's sort of like the old acronym for Pontiac. You know? <laughs> uh, it, I'll let you Google that one yourself. But because um, uh, my, my brother was guilty of that as well. He actually had an old Pontiac and I started laughing and then I told him what the acronym stood for. And, and he goes, man, and he got all mad. <laughs> so, but uh, uh, I, 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 I was I was trying to figure out uh, the, some of the blowback that I got the other night on uh, what's his name MB Enclosures, and um, which is fine, I, you know whatever it wasn't actually too bad. Um, a, a lot of people had a hard time defending him, so and I'm like good because I the points that I made had to do with him personally and the, and what he has displayed on his channel, not color, not anything like that. It's not anything like that. Uh, stupid people come in all colors. Okay, that's what I want to tell you that. But um, uh, one of the things I, 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 I like making fun of is, is people that just think their shit doesn't stink. Uh, you know, when a BMW owner or a Mercedes owner, and, and especially this is especially true in uh, like when you go to Africa or Asia, um, uh, status is everything for the people, for a lot, a lot of the culture. I don't want to say for everybody, but for a lot of the culture, don't buy into it. It's bullshit. Um, you know, um, I actually like that. I'll, I'll leave a, a link in the description to Creation's uh, old uh, uh, video, uh, Gucci, Gucci. 
Um, it's one of my favorite songs. I sing it a lot all the time. I think I have it in my playlist. And uh, it's just a great fun song, making fun of basic bitches. And you hear that in Thrift Shop with Ryan. Um, you know, he's making fun of people who pay $50 for a t-shirt and there's 10 of you at the same fucking party. And then you guys, you guys got your all hair spiked up or slicked back like the, the, uh, what's his name? That gangster show, the whatever. I'll put a link to that too. Those gangster boys, they was the son, John Gotti, the, the Gotti, being Gotti or growing up Gotti or whatever it is. Uh, they all look the same and they, and they're all fist pumping weirdos that go down to the beach at fucking Cape May and shit like that. Um, it doesn't have to be that way. Okay. You can be unique. You can, and you can, and you can borrow stuff. Yeah, you know, I was telling somebody today about my first component set. So my first component set was number one, the Gonzo Tweeter. So again, is, is the Gonzo Tweeter magical? No. In fact, it's 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 blank on purpose so that it it's judged on its performance, not on its brand. Okay. I back it up with a ten-year warranty. Are they eighty dollars ship? Yeah. Is that overpriced? Yeah. Uh, but you know, nobody else was backing it up, so I, it's a gimmick to do that. MTX also did that. And Orion also did that. Of course, for them, it failed miserably, but because I don't do big numbers, it's not really a big deal for me. And, and if anybody abuses the tweeter, then, you know, and I, I do, I do hundred percent QC. So, but if anybody abuses Twitter, that's not covered under warranty, idiot. So, but one of the first things I did was I, I, I think I told you this in another video was the PW655 USX from Pyramid. Again, Pyramid doesn't even make that. Some factory in China makes that for them. And at the time when I was doing it, which is the late 90s, when I started researching it, they had just switched over to a rubber surround, which, is, which was the difference. They put that X on it, on the part number. And uh, I started buying those and, they, and they're like, they were like $25 each. And it's a really great, it's a, sh it's a shitty subwoofer, even though they market it as a subwoofer or woofer. It's really better as a mid base. But what I figured out was, and I actually got it tested uh, by my buddy that works at Rockford. I won't even name his name, um, but um, he did the clipple on it. And he's like, hey, this is a really good performing woofer. What is it? And I was like, I don't want to tell you. And he's like, tell me. And so the only problem with it, uh, the P again, it's the Pyramid Super Pro PW655USX. Um, it, has a, it has a roll off at the top because it, the coil is a little bit heavier so that it plays bass better. But it has a little roll off at the top at about 3K. So if you cross it in, about, actually, I think it was a little higher. I got to look and see if I can find the graphs for you guys. But it rolls off at about three and a half K. And I said, you know what? If we roll this in at about 2.6 K or even 3K, it should sound really nice. And that's what's magical about the Gonzo Tweeter is just having a low FS. The FS on the Gonzo Tweeter is 950 Hertz. So you want to go one octave or even one and a half octaves above that. So you're talking about two, two and a half K. See? See how that works? And the reason why we needed a tweeter that can play low was to replace the ADS tweeters. Because I, I told you about that story too. So, but we needed something that was compatible with the three pallets of ADS crossovers that I, I had got from the, from the auction. So, and finding a regular tweeter with an FS that low is, is, is not common. It's not, it's not super difficult, but it's not common. As you saw when I was testing the Berserk tweeter and some other tweeters, you know, typically they have an FS of about 1.5. So when you go an octave up, you want to cross it up at a 3K or even another octave at 6K with like a, you know, like just a simple cap or something like that. But anyways, uh, the point being is that that's how I got started. And uh, I backed it up with a 10-year warranty and people loved it and it was fucking great. And now that I'm getting out of audio, that's why I feel really comfortable about making fun of it's Again, I'm not really making fun of JL. That's not what I'm really making fun of. What I'm really making fun of is people that take themselves too serious. And, and people that try to turn something that is fun and exciting like audio into something like, you know, business and, well, the, you know, we do $200 million a year, you know, this is really important. Like we'll kill people over this. Like, of course, Jeff never said anything like that. That's me imitating, you know, like Rockford and all those, those type of guys that are super serious and they're super corporate. And to me, it's, you know, it's a big middle finger to that, that idea. Okay. I, I just was using JL because I had the decals really, that's all. And then plus I was talking to fucking, uh, what was it, Darren over at uh, the metal shop? Darren, I supply the, the my metal shop guys with beer, and uh, and they like it because I you know they I mean they can buy their own beer, but I, I I like to supply it because it's something that I can do. Plus they give me really good rates, and so it's just sort of like a you know a good little favor for favor type of thing. And 
uh, Darren was jokingly said one time, he's like, well, hey, bring us some hookers and, and Coke if you can. And then I was like, what's a really bad substitution for hookers and Coke? And I go, how about some caffeine pills and some llamas? And he's like, llamas it is. <laughs> so that's how that got started. And then the other day when I was looking at the, the logo, I was like, what could JL also stand for? And that's how I came up with the Jizz Llama. So that's it. And there's a, a million ideas that I have like that. I, I, I usually reserve the dot com and then and then call it a day until I can come back and work on it. So but um, anyways, I think I've been ranting too much. Sherry and I are going to go to dinner. Uh, somebody sent. Oh, it's Curtis. Curtis Navarro. Curtis Navarro, as a gift for Christmas, gave me a $40 gift certificate to Outback, which is great because I we love Outback. But we just they the prices really went up uh, when the COVID hit and they're just super expensive now. Like you can easily drop $60 on lunch now. But uh, anyways, we're going to go have uh, the pork chops that we get with the Omar, which is the orange marmalade, uh, orange marmalade. Yeah. And uh, all the other stuff we get. I think I've done a video on that as well. So but I love you guys. I will talk to you later. Uh, the contest for Jizlama new logo. Please just go ahead and make your submissions. Uh, you can text them to me 602-312-6504 or you can email robotunderground at yahoo.com. Um, what was it? Uh, I don't even know what prizes you guys want. Typically, it'd probably be just, you know, like almost like gimmicks or gifts or something like that. Like I would love to just, you know, I'm working with Jerry right now to come up with a different one. So personally, I think that this could be the body of the, the, the llama. That's the neck. And then we got to make like a little face out there. And so it's two llamas facing each other. See, see how we can do that. So that's my idea, but we got to see what will work in the, the vinyl cutter and, uh, or, you know, if we got to go with screen print or whatever. So anyways, I love you guys. I will talk to you later.